everyone welcome back I've got a yummy selection of art haul stuff that I have collected for a little bit that I can't wait to take you through and so I think what we're going to look at first is going to be this little item here in the center because they're so cool so I actually placed another order for these these are art toolkits and they're packaged really a lovely um, little thank you card. But what these are are little paint palettes and little paint pans. And what I love about these is I ordered several of their folio palettes a couple weeks ago, and then I you know, I have a whole big drawer of Daniel Smith watercolors. Um, they kind of live like this. And then I have a whole big drawer of the whole buying gouache. And I'm like, I, I'm using the Kuretakis because they're so convenient and they're in the great big giant pan. And I can just pull the whole thing out of a drawer and be using it. Whereas my tube watercolors, and I love tube watercolors using them wet, but the thing about using wet watercolors is then, you know, they're in a great big pile and you got to hunt through things and they're just not as convenient. And I thought I need to make these more convenient so I can pull them out. And these are the Art Toolkit Folio Palettes and they can fit a lot of watercolor in these. Um, these are little metal pans and so if you get this what i like about it is look how long the pans are it's very thin and trim and so what happens is you fill each pan it's got a magnet here on the bottom of this piece already and then you fill the little pan with your tube water color you just pick a color and you take the lid off and you just kind of squeeze the color into it and then you set the pan down into your palette and you're ready to go you'll let them dry and then this palette is ready to go everywhere with you so i put all my daniel smiths in these little folio palettes and then i made a card of the colors and on the back I put what colors that were in there so that I would be able to identify um, what colors were where. And so now I can kind of look at this and be like, okay, so which color do I want to pick for my color palette challenge? And then they're all ready in here um, for me to use. How amazing are these? What I really like is how tiny they are. And I could put these in my pocket, my pocketbook, and take them with me if I wanted. So I did the Daniel Smith um, reds and pinks and oranges in a palette. And I did Daniel Smith blues and greens in a palette. And that's the way I decided to separate mine out. And I do have a few extra colors, which I laminated my sheet that I did the, the swatches on. It's just a piece of cold pressed watercolor paper that I swatched on and then laminated with a sheet of laminate stuff that you get. It's just a, a sheet of sticky stuff. I'll put a link below the video on the laminate sheets because that's fantastic stuff. You just stick it down and cut around your paper and you're done. Um, and so now I know it's in there, but if I fill up these last couple pans, I won't have space for that. So I may have to redo those at that time, but I don't plan on buying any more Daniel Smith for a while. So for now they're good. So I got the blue, green, the red, pink, orange, and then my metallics in a palette. And so you can see too, this one has some larger pans, some longer pans, and then these little art toolkits come with um, even smaller pans. So for like a little bitty travel palette, you could pick out your favorite colors and you could have some of these in here. Um, I think it fits like 30 of these long ones, probably 60 of these little small ones. So you can see how many colors you can put in there. It's a ton. Or you can get, because I ordered me some little tiny palettes. This one looks like a card case size. Um, so now you can open up these little ones and I can fill these with any of these palette shapes that I want. I can use a whole row of the long ones and then fill in with some short ones. Um, you can see how much stuff that you can fit into these little palettes and kind of make them the perfect little palette for you. Um, so I'm just gaga over these super lovely, very thin line 
palettes and because it's got these longer pans I feel like that's going to make me more excited to use these because what I have decided is I just don't like the little half pans. I don't like those. I like the long pan and as far as you know how much paint is in that it's probably like a half pan amount of paint just squeezed out longer um, so I love it. So I have personally ordered some little tiny travel palettes. Um, this is the pocket palette and then I've also ordered even like a tinier one just in case I want it. Look how tiny they come and it comes with all the little tiny palettes in it. So some of these palettes come with the pans in it ready to go. You can just take it out and change it out if you need to change those out. And uh, that's the Demi palette. So and then you can order the different palette configurations that you want. This is a little bit bigger one for like a mixing palette. Um, so I've ordered a few of those to play in. But I wanted to show you how cool these were from Art Toolkit. So this larger one is the Folio palette and you can fit 30 long pans, probably 60 of the little tiny pans, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15 of these great big pans. You could have a big mixing pan in here if you wanted to do that instead of um, a whole set of colors. So I could push these down here and throw a mixing pan in here. Um, and then of course I've done a color card up top and it's got a mixing thing on the top here. I love these so much. And then you'll notice that I have pretty little stickers that I have then added to my palette there. Um, rather than writing it with like a Sharpie or something, I did a fun little palette sticker there. And I did that with this amazing little label maker. Um, look how cute it is. I think I liked it because it was just cute, but I didn't have a label maker. But if you got a label maker, um, good. But this one has an iPhone app or a telephone app and it has a roll of 80 or so stickers in it and it's this one here it's the Femio P-H-O-M-E-M-O D3 label maker machine and I will link this below too and it's a Bluetooth machine and you can get replacement labels for it um, and then you just type everything in the app and you send it to the label maker and it just prints it out it was so easy it was just ridiculous how amazing that was and depending on when you get on here to look at those it looks like the price goes anywhere from $36.99 to $52.99 but they're on sale for like $23 or $24 so just kind of keep a lookout for that if you need a little label maker or something like that this was super cute and easy to use and I'm not sure I'll ever need 80 labels so I haven't even re ordered replacement labels but yummy look how much watercolor you can fit basically in your pocket like you could travel with that and have all your watercolors with you I mean maybe all of yours would fit into one of these your favorite palette for the season or whatever then after I got so excited with these I thought I want to put all my whole buying gouaches in palettes also and the gouache is um, these took long longer to get so I thought let me look and see what Amazon has and I love these whole pans from um, these palettes that you can get on Amazon and I did the same thing I just put the gouache into the pan filled the pan up and then um, they come with a mag magnetic strip um, with these so you just glue the mag you know you just stick the magnet on the bottom that comes with it and then they stick in there and then I did the same thing as I did with the watercolor and I made myself a color sheet and I, what they were on the back side and I love these too and these are not expensive at all either so I will link below um, the video for these palettes but I like them because I filled the pan they do shrink but you know um, they're the pigments are larger in gouache which makes them more opaque um, and so it's kind of interesting to see how much some of these have shrank now that they've been in here for couple weeks now I did this a couple weeks ago and some of these are still a little bit sticky that silver is a little sticky um, but you just reactivate these with water and they're ready to go so really nice way and then I, that was my whole buying gouache yellows and then I got a box for some blues and the red orange green I tried to separate them out in the same way that I had separated my watercolors and then I also because I have tubes of the core watercolors I thought let's put the cores in there and now I have made everything super easy 
slim and compact all these drawers of paints now fit basically in my hand and they can sit on a shelf right here at my table and now I can just pull them down and use them for a project rather than dreading getting out all the watercolors so super fun if you like these little tool kits this art tool kit i think these are going to be my new favorite art thing for a while um, i will link those below the video it's not an affiliate link i just love them so much and i love introducing you to some things um, that you might love and this little label maker is super fantastic okay so we also i also ordered um, off of amazon because i love my art journal so much um, I ordered, and I'm going to get a link. I'm going to show you what these are. Um, these are, so this is an Artway Indigo Rag Book. Watercolor panoramic landscape is what I've got here. It's got a couple sizes. I've ordered another size, but it's taken a little bit longer to get here. And basically what it is is a lovely watercolor kind of art sketchbook in a very interesting size with a handmade paper cover which i love love because i'm just having so much fun in my big art journal um and i was looking around at other options now that i'm like okay i'm feeling it i'm loving it i want to do some others maybe with uh little abstract books with and i love this shape and this paper is amazing it is handmade with deckled edges super duper um, textured in there I don't know if it's gonna show up but the texture is amazing it's not like a regular uh, watercolor paper it's a really yummy handmade texture on here so I'm thinking abstracts in mixed media would be perfect and it's got 20 sheets so it'd be like 40 different layouts front and back and how amazing would this be as a finished art book and these were not terribly expensive I was super impressed um, this book here was about $20 uh, $19 and two cents is what it's coming up with right now and it's coming out of Amazon UK but if you're a prime prime member um, if you're a prime member it was free shipping so I ordered um, two books and so now I have these yummy ones and I got this size and there's uh, another size that's a little more regular rectangle size and I thought these would be super fun so you're going to be seeing this coming up in some videos as an alternative to the other art journal that I am enjoying so much so I wanted to show you that set this over here on the side of us here there we go then I also got a fun new book I love getting books um, 30 days of creativity draw color and discover your creative self and so I thought this would be fun in between some other stuff that I'm doing just to kind of go through and look at things and play and maybe draw a little I don't love drawing but you know I go in and out of wanting to do it and not wanting to do it and this is kind of just a fun way to set yourself on a project and start just figuring out you know how do you get to say like this cake what are the steps and just to kind of have fun and see you know what what creativity this might inspire for me and so this book looked like a ton of fun and I thought I would show you that it's by uh, Johanna uh, Bassford and I will link this below the video okay so sketch box stencil girl so these are my subscription ones. It's the Stencil Girl monthly subscription stencils. There we go. Let's just see what we got here. Now I will tell you a Stencil Girl on their, their subscription thing, they actually give you a preview of the month that's coming. So these are kind of, I kind of had an idea of what was coming and they're, I don't know if that's my favorite, but they're little ruins and markings and stuff like that. Little um, kind of, uh, cave drawing kind of things and so that's kind of interesting we'll see I don't know if that's my favorite month that of uh, for theirs that I've gotten but it's pretty cool I also ordered some stuff from Joggles and now I've held on to this package waiting to share with y'all the things I got from Joggles and y'all when you get packaging save this packaging this is yummy mark making stuff so now I've I've, I've held on to this for a couple weeks trying to hold it for, for y'all so I could show you what it is. Look how pretty this wrapping 
tissue paper is. Maybe we'll try not to destroy it as I pull everything out. How about that? Then I can save it. Um, so pretty. I think I might have got that the last time they shipped me stencils too. All right, so Joggles is definitely one of my favorite stencil sources. Look at that. Whoa, I like that one a lot. Oh my gosh, now I, I don't even remember ordering that and I'm like, oh, look at that one. I got me some Tim, Tim Holtz little stencils, super fun. Um, I'll definitely link below the video the ones that I got. This one very much reminds me of the Klimt big stencil that I liked so much um, that they have. This is a bubble swirl stencil, but it looks like one of those Klimt stencils that I loved so much. And so I'm like, ooh, little version of that. Um, Crafters Workshop, this one is budding vase. I like the ones that look like flowers, so I thought let's try that one. I've got hanging circles. Again, it looks a little bit like a clumped one. I got uh, thick thin writing. Ooh, look at that, very graffiti-ish. So when we're feeling grungy, I got a good grungy one. Got a little set of sunflower bouquet stencils because again, flowers. <laughs> and then I got a few from the um, of the larger stencils, which the first larger stencil I got, and I thought, what am I gonna do with these? And then I started working on that big art journal, and I'm like, oh, I need more big stencils. <laughs> okay, so they've taped all of these together. I'm like, what are these doing? There we go. So I got this one, which is Van Gogh Starry Spirals Mask. Look at that. Super fun. Kind of reminds me of Klimt too with the spirals, so I liked it. Um, I got this yummy one that is Spotty Dotty. Um, these are the, some of the Elizabeth St. Hilary ones. Love that one. This one is basically a giant piece of Punchinella. So everybody has so much trouble finding the Punchinella when I mention it. It's the sequin waste. It's my very favorite stencils that I've used, you know, for a long time here on this channel and a long time in my art. And they're very hard to get a hold of just like a piece because, but you don't need like a whole spool of this stuff. You need like this piece. And so this was basically a gigantic piece of Punchinella, um, which is called Half Tone Dorothy. So Yum, yum. If you're having any kind of trouble getting some Punchinella, this is the stencil for you. And then this one was super cool. This one is Dribs and Drabs. And look at that. It's just some yummy mark making and drawing. So that is my yummy Joggles haul. But wait, is that all that I got from Joggles? Why no. No, it does not. Let me show you what else I got from Joggles. I need to make a tiny bit of room here because, see if I can set this to the side and not knock everything over, because let me show you this thing. I also got this piece of, I don't know, Lucite. What is this? It's just like clear stuff that looks like a picture frame, basically. Okay, this is called the Elizabeth St. Hilary perfect print gel plate registration tool and this ships separately than their stencils and it ships in a great big box and what this is is so that you can get perfectly aligned jelly plate prints every time and it's a 9 by 12 I think uh, size thing but it's made for and this is my very dirty jelly plate I've got a clean one but this is a super dirty one made for the 8x10 jelly plates and it fits in here completely perfectly and then what it does is you take your 9x12 piece of paper and you can then you know tape that piece of paper to this lucite piece and every time that you put some paint on your plate and you can pull your paper back down and smooth it out and then pick it up and more paint and then push it down and smooth it out. Um, you get perfectly aligned prints for your jelly plate things, which if you're using multiple layers and you're creating, you know, an interesting piece of art and you're just kind of, you know, sticking the paper down on the jelly plate any way that you can get it down and then everything's all uneven, 
you know, sometimes that's frustrating when you create something that you like, but it looks so messy and unfinished. This is the coolest thing for helping you. It's level with the gel plate and it will allow you to pick up those large pieces of paper up and down. Um, so I could not wait to get one of these because I have several, a couple jelly plate classes on Skillshare. I've got a new one coming out very soon. And so I feel like this might be good to do some type of bonus project in that new class that's coming out. So you can be looking for that. It'll probably be here on YouTube. Um, fun little extra thing. Now, you don't have to get one of these to do perfectly aligned jelly prints. You know, you could tape your paper down to your surface and that would be fine. You could get a piece of wood or something that is a similar thickness to this because this is about, yeah, it's about three-eighths of an inch. Um, so you could get like something of a similar thickness. You know, my paint stick that I always like to use is a little bit thinner, but it's closer. So you could, you know, make something like that work. But I love this concept of this already being the right size for this 8x10 plate and making really cool prints and then be all lined up and lovely and perfect. So I just wanted to show you that super cool tool and you'll just have to ignore my very old super dirty jelly plate that I need to clean or I may, that, that might be ruined, it's so old now. <laughs> so here we go, drum roll, sketch box. Let's see what we got. I will have to tell you, I held on for this for a day or so because I had errands and all uh, right after I got it. I had a couple days of errands and I got a couple messages saying, did you get that sketch box yet? And I'm like, I did, but I hadn't opened it. And so they're like, oh, can't wait till you see it. Or, oh, I don't know about this one. So I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Okay. There's a marker box. Uh, all right, you know marker boxes are not my favorite. <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay, so we got some Hanamule sketch box uh, pad. This is the manga paper, 80, it's 40 pound paper. And we got some Holbein colored pencils in fur green. That looks like a black and a white. And then we got some Copic markers. Let's see what's, ooh, acrylographs. Okay, that right there saved it for me. <laughs> I love the acrylographs. Love, look at that cute little sticker. Um, I actually love the acrylographs so much that the first time they got some of these um, that I had to get some more from that site. So I got a whole bunch of acrylograph pens here um, on my desk because I love them. Um, so that is for me a definite win and it looks like we got a fun like celadon green and a gray and then some copic markers in some green colors and i don't really use the copic markers so i'd say the pencils and the acrylograph saved the day on this one for me okay so now we see all the fun stuff that we got today what do you think of this yummy art haul and i'm gonna have to uh maybe pull something out and let's make something with all of these yummy choices today and just see what we can make so i hope you enjoyed seeing a whole bunch of new little goodies and things that you might like to try and i will be right back i'm gonna clean my desk off real quick all right, so I think what I want to make today is I want to play. I want to show you these little palettes, how they work. And then we might do some mark making here on our landscape sketchbook. I'm just going to get it started. So I'm going to pull out these little Holbein pencils that we got. Because we got a fur green. I'm going to stick with this green palette. Why not? We got lamp black and we got white. Um, so I think I'm going to mark make with the Holbein colored pencil in the white and we'll just get an idea for what this palette can do for us in this color range with some just some little mark making. I've got my gouache out. I kind of feel like I need to activate the gouaches. This is that green pan, but I'm kind of feeling like right in here with these blues and greens might be fun. So, you know, the gouaches dry out pretty good. So 
I'm gonna make sure I put a nice amount of water in there. I might even want like a little touch of one of these bright colors. I don't know. What do you think? And I could activate these little Daniel Smiths. Maybe one of those. I like playing with opacities and stuff also. And maybe a little, a little uh, Raphael brush here. Just dipping it down in the water back here. And I'm kind of feeling like... I want to use one of these right here like look at this color right here doesn't that look like it goes right there with that archer and olive pen maybe so it's kind of my test here on what this paper looks like what it's going to do for us and just see what we think because I got I got two of them <laughs> I think papers, you know, like this, it's a, it's it's more of a rough watercolor kind of finish I can see. Um, and I like that. I like that. Ooh, okay, I did not mean that. Rawr! <laughs> Let's throw it over here so it's, it's on purpose. But I don't know. I don't think that was the right one. That's not the one I... It's not quite what I was thinking. Let's try this grayish one. Okay, that's weird too. All right, let's go over here to the uh, the whole binds. Kind of feeling like whatever this dark gray is. These are the Daniel Smiths, sorry. Okay, so this one's more of a kind of olive -y color there. And I'm just playing. There's no, there's nothing in my mind today beyond creating just some fun abstracts here in my abstract book. This is gonna be the book that'll be abstracts going forward. Let's try this weirdo green. I could tell you what all these are, but I'm not positive the names on all of them off the top of my head. Let's see, I've got them on the back of the card. So I've got Jadeite Genuine, Cascade Green, Kingman Green, Chromium Green Oxide, Terra Verde. So that's this row right across here is these right here. Um, Serpentine Genuine, Rich Green Gold, Terra Verde Olive, Sap, Undersea Green. I like all those um, green shades. They're very pretty. But since I started with that kind of weirdo gouache color and that kind of uh, olive -y color, we're just kind of, we're going to ride that wave. I'm almost wondering about this one right here. Ooh, look at that. Whoa! So now I can tell I've definitely got more water in that pigment. I like it. Okay, so that's pretty cool. What if we let that dry a tiny bit and we try out this stencil, I don't know, in some color just to say we did it. This is Joggles, and it's the Crafter's Workshop TCW2114. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll definitely put a link below. Let me let these dry, and I'm going to grab a paint. Maybe we'll just do it. I don't know. I'll grab a paint, and I'll be right back. Okay, that dried rather beautifully, actually. It does um, seem to... It, I need to get me something sharp. It does seem to warp a little bit, kind of like that cotty paper does. But then it mostly straightens back out. Um, and then I thought, how about some gold? <laughs> because um, I like the gold. And I'm thinking the gold might be a good choice on this. And I just got a little tiny bit of gold on there. Don't even mind. Not even hating it. <laughs> I do want to get... Um, maybe I'll just squish that in. There we go. Because I've got gold everywhere. I'm trying to get that opened back up. So I'm kind of thinking a little bit of gold. Let me grab a uh, sponge now that I've got that tip opened up. Maybe I can get a little more of that out of there. There we go. Hadn't used the, hadn't used that in a little while, but what about the gold? I know you can see this with me. Which way do I want it to go? Oh, let's just do like right here. Oh, oh I like this right here. Okay. Oh. Just get that up there. Kind of run it off the edge there. And then we could kind of come down here. And I could do it a little bit less paint so that it's a better defined shape. I had that a little bit too heavy right there. Oh, yeah. Now I'm feeling like right here, like right through here maybe. 
and I like it when it kind of fades off into stuff not when it's so heavy like I just did it right at that top edge but I'm not hating it so don't even worry <gasps> look at that Oh, I love this stencil. All right, that might be a new favorite stencil coming out to play. All right, let's throw that down in some water and let's get these little acrylograph ones open because I love these are the acrylographs are acrylic paint. There we go. And you got to get them started. And I don't know how you get the paper off of these, but I find if you just twist a pin the, uh, the plastic at least will come off easier rather than fighting with that, with fighting with it. So these are easy to get started. Let me just pull this paper back over here. And you basically shake it up a little bit. It's acrylic paint, but it's a very fine line, which is why I like these so much. Um, they're you know very similar to say like a Posca pen, but it's even a finer line. Um, so once you get these started, then it's ready to go and it's an acrylic paint. Um, so these are my favorite ones for really fine detail. If you like to bullet journal and art journal and stuff like that, these are basically what they're made for because this company is a company that makes really lovely journals and stuff and so We could do some yummy dot making, line making, mark making, um, anything that we're kind of feeling inspired by, we can do with these. Set that to the side. That's paint is still wet. <laughs> oh, I do love 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 the archer and olive acrylograph pens i mean that that makes my day right there when one of those comes in the sketch box because that is really worth it if you go to their site and you look at their pens and you're like would i like these yes yes you would <laughs> so whether you like everything that came in your box really not as important as if did you get at least one thing that was so amazing that you're like yeah and for me these pins are going to be it every time in just about any color that you wanted to send me but i do like the greens i had in my little dms the the i don't know what are you going to think about these and i'm like hmm, i don't know we're going to have to wait till we get that box open Shh, don't tell me <laughs> and i like them i like them they're beautiful okay so i love that i love where we're going here i've got a little bit of that holbein pencil again i could come back on top with some additional marks if i wanted to oh look how pretty this is first one in my new journal <laughs> okay i did tape this with very thin painter's tape I think I'm gonna stop it there. I could have pulled out the one that looks like Punchinella. Oh, it does pull a tiny bit of paper with the tape, but it did not tear the paper. So yay for that. It does kind of make a texture a little bit, so I don't know that I'll use tape very often in this book, but I wanted to test it out for us and see how good or how bad it was if you needed to tape stuff off. Oh, <gasps> look at that. Look at our first painting in our new journal. Ah, it's gorgeous. All right, I hope you had a good time checking out some yummy new supplies with me today. I absolutely love these little art toolkit palettes. This journal is so gorgeous. Can't you see now a whole bunch of lovely abstracts in this book with the gouache and the watercolor now that that's how I've started it? I totally can. I can't wait to do some more of these with you and I will see you next time.